Hi everyone, it's Tasha Renee, and this is the first video of my adventure blog, uh, moving from Portland, Oregon to Hawaii, the big island. I'm super excited. And I'm doing this video on purpose, looking as such, because this is who I am today and how I have been for the past, I don't know, what's it been, like 2017 probably. Um, it's been really, really, really difficult for me. And so this has kind of been my adapted look. I have another one that I wear that says good vibes. <laughs> and I got some leopard print, you know, jammies on and the hair's been gray for a while now. And I'm usually not done up in the face. I mean, I get done up with stuff too, don't get me wrong, but this is my normal state. And I wanted a really good before, or should I say beginning of the journey, like picture, because this is, this is me for the most part. So I want to give you a little bit of a background for those that don't know me, like kind of way back of where all of this whole journey started that's leading me up to being able to move to Hawaii and why Hawaii's come into my existence in the first place. So about 14 years ago <laughs> in a land far, far away, um, I broke up with a boyfriend uh, who was the love of my life at that time. And, um, that was a very shocking, traumatic breakup that, that re-triggered a lot of father wounds for me around emotional abandonment and rejection. And during that time, then my father stopped talking to me. He's not talked to me since. And so there was those two things that kind of compounded each other. Um, and so I started having panic attacks every two hours, 24 hours a day, even in the middle of the night for three months straight. And then I got my hypoglycemic attacks confused with my panic attacks and I started eating every two hours, 24 hours a day, even in the middle of the night. And I gained over 70 pounds. I went from a size 3.5 to a size 18.20. Um, and all of my self-worth was tied to the outside of who I was. So when this happened, um, I very much hated myself and my body. I would say horrific things to myself. I would pinch myself. I would not let anyone see me fat that knew me thin. Um, I drove even though I was dealing with panic attacks in the car especially and became agoraphobic. I would drive out of the way to go to my job at that time so that nobody saw me and knew me. Um, that knew me thin would see me fat. And it took a long time for me <coughs> to learn how to love myself and my body. And I'm very, very, very grateful for my awakening and grateful that all those things happened because I now have such a deep, deep level of self-love that is unbreakable and unshakable and something that no one will ever be able to take from me ever again. Or should I say something that I will never give to somebody else ever again, because technically that's really what happened. And so, yeah, um, I went to an alternative healing arts school, got my AA in transformational psychology, holistic health, as well as becoming a Reiki master and a hypnotherapist, um, and would have become a yoga teacher trainer. Um, I took a YTT for six months and wasn't able to do my practicum at the end because I hated my body and didn't want to stand up in front of people. So I didn't actually, I missed out on that actual certification, even though I went through all the time. We'll redo that at some point. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So fast forward, um, up to probably 2017, um, well, I was living in the Pearl District. I had manifested an incredible, amazing high rise on the 12th floor, uh, richest neighborhood of Portland, Oregon, gorgeous floor to ceiling windows. The, I could see the sunrise every morning in, in these ways that were just, uh, I can't even explain, they were so beautiful. And I manifested that for myself. And then I, um, ended up um, quitting the job that <laughs> provided me all that amazingness because I was be not being treated kindly and needed to get out of that environment. So I did have the opportunity to concentrate on my business and did not do that in the proper ways that I should have. And also because I didn't fully believe in myself and what I was doing at that time uh, or my work really. And so unfortunately then uh, started to, I'm 44, going to be 45 at the end of March. 
and in 2018, November 2018, uh, I started early perimenopause and I started bleeding very heavily all the time. And I became severely anemic. Um, I lost my my the, my place in downtown because I obviously quit that job and wasn't not a lot of money was coming in. In fact, no money was coming in. <laughs> I had a little bit of money saved. Ended up getting a couple of clients that helped me, coaching clients that helped me to continue to, to pay for my rent to the place that me and my ex-best friend were at. And, um, yeah, so I became severely anemic. I didn't know I was anemic. I thought it was just fatigue because I'd read that that's what happens when you end up, you know, end up with early perimenopause. Um, turns out, uh, your iron levels, levels are supposed to be around 12 and a half. Mine were like below seven and a half. I was, the, the doctors were like, we don't know how you haven't passed out at this point. You should have had a blood transfusion. <laughs> like it was pretty bad. Um, I had pretty much lost all of my friends. Uh, the only friend I had left was my ex best friend, um, and uh, she was amazing, and incredible, and so grateful to her. Um, but we ended up not being able to afford the place that we were in, and so with nowhere to go and no one to help us, because she didn't have anyone to help her either, we ended up staying in a hotel. Um, we stayed in that hotel for six months. We lived off my credit cards. She ended up getting a part-time job. So we, every two weeks, we didn't know where we were gonna be living or if we were gonna be able to stay there and afford to live there. It was like 400 some odd dollars every single um, week to live there. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. Um, and on top of going through the early perimenopause and bleeding for literally sometimes 90 days in a row, um, my back went out twice. So I ended up being completely flattened on my back for four months. In a row <laughs> and my ex-best friend had to take care of me and it was just super stressful and it was it was just a very horrific time um we ended up having to get donations off facebook to survive at one point my grandfather uh thank god sent me a little bit of money um at one point so that we could survive um uh but there yeah no relationship with my mother at this point um i still don't have that or my father or anyone in my family so we had no one to help us and the reason i'm telling you that's not for you to feel sorry for me it's so that you can see my journey of where i've come to because it's really important to understand what i had to fight through so during this time i'm clearing and healing and releasing all of these things around lack and around uh fear and um my ex-best friend and i who were all we have at this point you know uh we end up that situation ended up tearing us apart completely. There was, there was just nothing left uh, after living there. Nothing. It, it was over, and I don't have any animosity towards her. It was a very ugly breakup, um, painful, and but yet I don't have any. I don't have any ill will towards her. I hope I don't think she would towards me. Looking back, I'm sure that she can feel the same way I do, which was that things were just really crazy, and we thought we were never going to get out of there. <laughs> so awful. Um, but anyways, then my, um, a very good friend of mine, um, her name is Angel, literally my walking angel. She saw my post on Facebook that I had nowhere to go. And she came and she drove all the way from Salem, Oregon, which is like a 35, 40 minute drive and came to get me and took all my stuff out of the hotel that we could get. And, um, she housed me for a day, ended up in this really beautiful, um, beach place that she had been gifted for three or four days just happened to have that and so we went and took advantage of that and that was gorgeous and amazing it was a lake house uh, that had well, the beach was across the street basically and then I ended up living with another woman um, who I'd been friends with for uh, I'd known her for over 20 years but I hadn't talked to her in a really long time um, ended up sharing her bedroom um, in a very horrific <laughs> environment um, where there were six people basically in her two bedroom apartment and her and I were sharing a bedroom and um, she had an ex-husband that was there that was a sexist, racist, horrible man um, in the beginning. And then at the end, him and I actually ended up making amends and being great and, and awesome. And um, But I was still going through, uh, was contemplating on if I was going to have to have a hysterectomy at this point. I did find something uh, of a, a progesterone only pill that was finally working and um, but I was having to take it every six hours and it's not something you can do long term and I still hadn't found a job and then her and I started doing my meditation practice which is a combination of six different things 
Uh, we actually didn't do the exercise portion because I still was at a place where if I went up a flight of stairs, I was bleeding. Like it was just like, it was bad. And so we started doing reading 10 minutes a day from, from a book that was something that was, you know, self-improvement. We did, um, we didn't do the journaling part portion of it, but we did the affirmations, which were the most powerful thing ever that's changed my whole life. Um, and then we did meditation portion of it. And there's also visualization than the exercise portion, but within two weeks of doing that and repeating the words, everything's working out for me. I got a job. Finally, a work from home job. It was, it was a horrific low vibrational job, but oh my gosh, was I so grateful and still am very grateful that I had had that opportunity and it was just like, that was all of a sudden like, you know, <laughs> six, $700 every two weeks so that I could feed myself. And that was like a million dollars at that point. Right. So it ended up that I was able to finally get my own room with a door. Oh my gosh, a door that was my own. That was when that door closed, I, I bawled my eyes out just being so grateful to have my own space where I could finally just be myself and have privacy. Um, I hadn't had that in so long. And so I stayed there for about a month and a half, two months. Uh, that didn't work out so great. Uh, the gentleman I stayed with is great and amazing, but he, uh, yeah, he, we just didn't work out. And um, so then I ended up staying with another gentleman um, who was all was my father energy ends up being. And I didn't notice this until after I moved in. Beautiful, gorgeous home. Um, I realized at some point looking around the house that it was set up exactly like it was in the, my teenage my teenager home that I had grown up in. And he was like my father almost to a T in so many different ways. And so... Naturally, I went through a lot of things that triggered me and a lot of things that was really difficult to <laughs> to um, just clear out of myself. But I made a point to really pay attention to how I was being triggered and how I was responding to things. And I did lose my shit a couple of times, I'm not going to lie. But anyways, that didn't end so great either. And when it was time to leave, um, I found myself with a U-Haul completely packed and me sitting in a in his living room, not knowing if I was going to stay in a parking lot or if I would have somewhere to go. And then I remembered this lovely, lovely young woman, her name's Sierra, and she had offered me a place to stay in her place in um, the Gresham area. And so I was like, okay. So I called her and she was like, yeah, I totally have a space. You can come and um, you can just pay, you know, the amount of rent that you've been paying. And so I did, I came here and it's been a really great experience. I have felt really safe here. I've felt appreciated. I have felt heard and I've also been triggered pretty, pretty, uh, deeply on a lot of different levels because this girl is literally me in my twenties and I've been glorifying my twenties for so long. And that, I mean, she had my hair color, she had my body type, she had my profession, she had <laughs> the same men choices. She was like, she's like right on the verge of, of awakening and not quite there yet. Um, uh, yeah, so just all these things, big hearts, lots of energy. Um, yeah, so I realized after living here that I was like, oh yeah, I don't actually wanna be in my 20s and I'm actually for once grateful to be in my 40s and be moved past that. And once that happened, I kind of got into this energy space of really just realizing that I didn't need to be in here anymore. And I knew that once that feeling, I felt that I've moved so many times that when that feeling comes up, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna be here for much longer. It's gonna be a matter of months and I just won't be here anymore. Just naturally, I just knew that my energy was going to move me out. And um, yeah, wow. Okay, so so then I had also, you know, during the time of early perimenopause, I couldn't work out, I couldn't do anything. And so I really, now that I had my body back, I, oh, I, I forgot to mention, I, I ended up finally finding a birth control pill that worked after trying eight of them. The ninth one finally worked. And I'd been on that since January of this year, or last year, sorry. God, it's been a year since I've been on that birth control. It's so crazy to think about. And um, so that finally got my cycle regular. I got to, I was finally able to dance and move. And oh my gosh, it was such a blessing to be able to do that. I, I cried many times realizing I was able to do that. In fact, it makes me emotional just talking about it. And um, so I started working out again. And I started working out and um, pretty, pretty hard. Um, I didn't see any results for... 
about three months, but I was like, I don't care. I, I wanted to just keep going. I wanted to not give up on myself. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep going. I want to feel better and I want to do something healthy for my body. And I had known from my past that it took about three to four months for me to see any results usually because I do eat, you know, every six, every, you know, I eat six times a day and I, um, it takes, I can't cut down my carbs, any of that stuff. So it just takes a while. And I've always been like that. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just not even going to think about it. And I'm just going to keep going. And pretty, and soon enough, about four months in, I started to just like, really my face was changing and my clothes were fitting differently. And wow, it was like a real big, like, holy crap, I can't believe this is happening. And so then I started posting like videos of me on like live videos on Facebook of me working out and just doing my workouts. And there was just no, there was no thought process behind it, but the fact that like, this was a way for me to get everybody else involved. It was a way for me to keep myself account, held, account, held accountable because I was like, oh, I'm telling people I'm going live, which means I really have to go and do it. And people were just seeing like, you know, that I was showing up and I was, um, you know, the differences and what the before and after pictures that I was taking. And, and I'm, and I'm so not all about diet culture or diet products or any of that, right? Like I don't use a scale. I don't measure. I'm all about loving your body through, uh, to change it, loving it so much you're changing it and doing things in a way that's just more about a new habit forming. And then your body just naturally takes shape, a new shape from that and is healthier and feels better and more energy and all the things, right? Well, then I had a friend of mine who was like, oh, I want to hire you as a health and fitness coach. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm not certified. <laughs> I All I'm doing is just showing up and just being me. And she's like, I know. And I followed you for a really long time and I trust you. And that's what I want. And she's like, you know, what might be helpful is if you started a group and charge so you can make a little bit of money and then people could actually follow you and do what you're doing. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a good idea. So I did. So I started a 12 week glow up workout meditation group. So it's not just working out. We also do a uh, daily meditation, which is the meditation process I was telling you about. Only we do all of them. We do the journaling, we do the reading, we do the affirmations, the exercise obviously is in there already. We do a meditation and we do a visualization. And I go live, they watch me, they you know follow along, um, the videos are saved, the group stays open forever so that if they want to, they can go back and repeat it or uh, do it at their own pace, so to speak, and it goes on for 12 weeks. And that's been great and amazing. And I had about 15 people in there. 15, 14 people in there um, and hoping to double, double or triple that. And the next time I do, it, I'll be holding out again in May um, from Hawaii. <laughs> so exciting. Um, so yeah, so I started doing that and that's been another place in my journey. Um, and then, you know, I really started to, <laughs> I really started to decide that 2021 was going to be the year for me that I was going to focus on making a lot of money and I was not going to let myself get in my own way again, ever again. I was not going to give into my fears. I was not going to uh, do any of those things. And mind you, I know, mentioned that I was, that I became agoraphobic from all the stuff that happened with my ex and I'm still dealing with that. Uh, but it's almost all the way gone uh, because I started this mindset of just like, I'm not doing that. So I started asking the universe. I started saying, first of all, how, can I make a lot of money? How can I make millions of dollars helping millions of women? What do I need to do in myself? What do I need to clear, heal, release, learn? How, to, how do I do this? And there's a woman named Shamina Taylor who I followed for a long time, but I haven't actually followed her. Like if her stuff comes up, I'm just kind of like, I scroll through it. She's, she's all about like, buying the, the, the bags and like, you know, her hair and nails are done all the time and all these great, amazing things that are awesome for her. And I've, I've never resonated with her. I was just like, whatever. And I just kind of scroll past it. And all of a sudden she's in my newsfeed out of nowhere talking about this free three-day masterclass that she's doing called Money Mastery. Or um, yeah, I think it was called Money Mastery. And I was like, really felt drawn to her all of a sudden. And, and I was listening to her talk and I was like, fuck it, it's three days and it's free, I'll do it. So I took that free masterclass and started having all of these activations in my body and 
I was crying. I was having to pause her her replays and like do forgiveness work around my dad. And I realized that I looked at money the way I looked at my dad, which was intimidating and not good enough. And like, it would never stick around. It would never stay. And like all these things. And I was like, holy crap. Like, I can't believe this is actually happening. This is like, this is, this is so cool. And, um, she was offering a paid program called infinite wealth. And it was a pretty steep payment, you know, um, it's not what I really had in my bank account to be spending, <laughs> but I asked for a big sign on whether or not I should do that. And I got a huge one and I just, uh, I followed that sign and was just like, okay, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. So I made the investment. I made bi-weekly payments and still have two payments left as I'm making this uh, video actually. And, um, uh, and I entered that program and, um, on top of that, cause they all, this all kind of goes together. Um, I also had already done the anger and, uh, 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 anger embrace workshop with me and Jacqueline faith. And at this time it was a woman named Trinity and, uh, it had been amazing, incredible woman. It was about embracing your anger and, and clearing that out and having a safe place and getting underneath those anger, those emotions, that anger emotion, figuring out what that is. And, um, women are still having experiences to this day of the great things that are happening from taking that. So of course I wanted to do another one and uh, we did an introductory price for the first one and now we've upped the price because we realize how valuable it is and so we want to do that. So, um, and the reason I say that is because it, it kind of leads into everything. It's just a lot happening this year. <laughs> I'm already 21 minutes into this freaking video. So the second thing I started asking the universe for was how what's an easier way to have this agoraphobia tr transition out of my body in a way that doesn't re-trigger my trauma every time because everybody you hear from is like oh you gotta face your fears you just gotta go out and face your fears and just face it yeah that's never worked for me it's, it's just made it more scary and made me feel like i don't have a choice and it makes me feel jumbled and, and scared and, and all the things and um so I started to do this thing where I was like, you know, I know my body really wants to be like relaxed. And so I started doing my own relaxation technique and I started, I did that and I did it for like two weeks in a row every morning to the point where I would say the words relax and trance and my body would just now, even now, if I say it, I can feel my body trying to relax as I say it. It was just like, an, it's like an instant thing now. It's really, really amazing. And then on top of that, I started watching, pulling up on YouTube and watching point of view, um, driving videos and all these things started coming up. Like I started crying just for no reason. I was just like, I was like watching one of the ones on a freeway and I started to just like not even feel panic or anxiety, but I started to get emotional and all this emotion started coming out. And, um, these aha moments were happening. And one day I was in, I was in the bath actually. And, um, I went through this thought process in my head where I was like, what, what is it that my body really wants when it's out and it's having an attack in a car? So, so my, my stuff is when I'm in a car and I'm like halfway to where I'm going and halfway from home, then I like freak out and realize I can't get home in time enough to not have a panic attack. And I freak out. And so a lot of times I just don't even leave the house because I don't even want to even attempt that. <laughs> and so I'm like, what's my body really want? And the answer was wants to be, wants to go home. Yeah, but why does it want to go home? Because that's where it feels safe. Yeah, but why? Because it's relaxed. Oh, so my body really doesn't want to go home. It wants to be relaxed. And I was like, well, I can give it that. I can give it that. I can do that. I've been doing that with a relaxation technique. And so then I just thought, oh my God, I can just give it that in the moment of what's happening. So between that, watching the point of view, driving videos on my big screen TV in my bedroom so it would look like it was huge. And um, I reconnected with a best friend of mine, her name's Aubrey. And I reconnected with her and I was like, I need to go and get some things at Fred Meyers and, and I would love to have you come and get me. And she's like, okay. And she hasn't seen me in years, so she knows my old behaviors. And I just have committed to this point to not getting in my own way. So on the buildup, of course, for her to come get me, I'm starting to feel anxiety. I'm starting to feel kind of panicky. I've decided to do my relax and relaxation technique before she comes to get me so I can relax and stay like in my body. 
she comes to get me we get in the car and she's like before we even go there she's like are you are you okay and i said oh no i'm panicking but and i'm and i'm i'm freaked out i'm scared but we're gonna go so let's just go and she was like what and i was like oh yeah i'm not getting in my own way this year so let's just let's go <laughs> so we did and i started to feel anxiety a couple of times and then right as we were trying almost getting to where we were going i started to kind of panic and i literally just was like nope and i did this technique and i'm not kidding you as soon as I said the words relax and trance, my body took this big deep breath. I went, and when I let it out, it was gone. The anxiety was just gone. It was fucking insane. It was amazing. And then the way home, I had a little bit of anxiety that raised, but I just, I kind of capped on it. It was like, nope, we're not doing that. It's okay. And yeah, that was a really big breakthrough for me. And then she came to pick me up a couple uh, last weekend and we went out and went shopping and it was great and amazing. And I didn't, I had a, a couple moments of anxiety, but again, I kind of squashed it. And pulled it back down and I was fine. Um, but so, so that, that was a big thing. And then the next thing, this is also what's been happening while I've been here since August. Uh, I've released a lot, a lot of anger towards my father, towards my ex, um, anger. I didn't even know I was still holding on to, and that's really cleared out a lot of things for me as well. But getting to Hawaii now, finally, because it's taken this long to get me to this point to tell you this. And I appreciate it if you're still listening to all this. Um, so I get into the money mastery. I'm not money, the infinite wealth, by the way. And that is clearing and, and removing blocks and, and triggering the shit out of me on things. And oh my gosh. And really expanding my mind. And, and it's just, it was insane. It was just, it was, there's so much that that, class, that program has done for me. I'm not the same person. So, and I mentioned that before I mentioned Hawaii, because I know that the reason Hawaii is open to me is because of the expansion that this woman has helped me to see in myself and my brain and what it is I'm capable of having. So I started saying to the universe one morning, I said, I am open to living wherever you want me to live in the world, anywhere. I don't care where it is, as long as it's for my highest good, somewhere I'm going to be happy and I'm going to have my own safe, beautiful, big, beautiful place that I can live in for as long as I want to and enough money to, to live there and have that life that I want to. Um, hold on one second. All right. I had to plug in my phone. I apologize. Um, and the next day, Hawaii started showing up and I was like, Hawaii? What? That is not somewhere that I had thought. Oh, she, sorry, my roommate left and came back and I didn't realize it. Uh, Hawaii is not something that I had thought about. I was like, Hawaii? Okay. I was like, well, look, you guys have brought Hawaii up a couple times today and that's great Ooh. and awesome, but you're going to have to like make it overwhelming for me or I'm not going to, I'm not going to think it's a thing. Well, <laughs> first of all, um, I find out that the girl in my group is moving to Hawaii. I find out, I haven't talked to this, this amazing, incredible woman. Her name is Forrest. Um, haven't talked to her in like two years and she all of a sudden shows up out of nowhere. She's like, oh, I just thought about you and wanted to reach, to reach out to you. She lives in Hawaii. She's in, in Portland currently right now, but she's been going back to Hawaii in March. And then my friend Jacqueline is going to be moving there this year as well. <laughs> and then it was coming up constantly everywhere else on top of that. I mean, it was really was overwhelming. Like I asked for, and I was like, if I said it a lot, I said, okay, I accept, receive, and allow moving to Hawaii. You better make it so I can, so I can afford to live there because you know, that greenery is not, that wasn't the best thing on my side at the time. And so, um, yeah, so this happens. I make a post about how the fact about that I'm going to be doing women's empowerment retreats, luxury empowerment retreats. And I am going to be doing that this year. Um, and how I start naming off all these locations of where I would like to hold them. And I forget I forget, right? Because there's no such thing as a coincidence to put Hawaii in there. And I have a doctor friend of mine who writes on there. She's like, oh, don't forget about Hawaii. I'm actually moving there in a couple of weeks. And I would love for you to hold a retreat here. That would be awesome. And I was like, how did I fucking forget for Hawaii? And I was like, oh my God, I've been, I've been like manifesting. I think I'm supposed to move there, I think. And she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's amazing. So she writes me privately and she's like, oh, actually, here's the link to the, the house that I'm renting with a couple of friends and it's got an apartment attached to it. It could be calling Tasha, Tasha. And I was like, what? 
I look at the link and it's like lush. It looks like something out of a movie. It's all this luscious greenery and then this cliff that drops off with this with the freaking ocean. And I was like, is this real life? And she offers that I can stay there for free from uh, middle, middle of June through middle of August. And I'm like, holy crap. Then my friend Forrest offers for me to stay for free with her before I get to her place. And I'm like, is this real life? Is this happening right now? Um, and that's kind of, kind of fallen through and then kind of picked back up. That may still be an option, uh, but it kind of fell through at one point. We were both just kind of like, whatever happens, happens. You know, we just really don't have any expectations. Um, but yeah, so I was like, okay, well, you know, as soon as uh, I get some extra moolah in my bank account, I'm going to buy a ticket and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And I just decided, I was like, well, since uh, everything had kind of fallen through with Forrest at that point, I was like, I'll just rent a room for $800 somewhere and just move there because the island's calling to me. And I didn't want to ignore that. And the universe was like, you're going. And I was like, okay, I'm going. I knew I was gonna have to give up every single thing that I own, my bed, my TV. I'm princess in the pea when it comes to my bed, by the way, okay? That bed has traveled with me like 25 times. <laughs> Not that many, but a lot. And so getting rid of that, not having the comfort of that when I move somewhere is going to be uh, a big deal for me. It, getting rid of all my things is a big deal for me, but it's worth it. So Forrest is a tarot card reader and she starts talking to me and she's like, I'm getting all these messages for you. And I just feel like I want to pull cards for you. And I was like, okay, that'd be amazing. So she starts to tell me, first of all, that she sees me detoxing for about seven to 10 days, like... From the moment I get on the plane, I'm going to feel like crap until like seven to 10 days. And she said, it's going to feel like you're dying, but I see you sweating a lot. I see the island making you lose a lot of weight. Uh, I see all of your workout stuff being su really successful. Your coaching business successful, uh, possibility of a man being there, like love happening. Uh, and you, basically all your dreams coming true. <laughs> She's like, you just like everything, success, money, love, uh, all of it is going to be happening. And I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not afraid to go through some hard, ugly times. If I ask, the, I ask the island and my guides to please not make it like that, where I feel like I'm going to be dying, but I'd like for it to be a peaceful transition and I'm open to that. So we'll see if that's been granted. <laughs> um, but yeah. And so I bought the ticket tonight. I did. And I'm going to post that video right after this one. It's short, <laughs> definitely not 32 minutes long. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be vlogging everything. So I'm not very good at the editing part. I'm going to have to learn how to do that. So this is a lot more interesting to watch than just whatever, but you know, hopefully I can have some, I know force is actually really good with that. So when she gets there and I get there, then, <laughs> then it'll be awesome. But, um, something that happened today that I wanted to talk about was um, this morning I started feeling really stressed out about moving. I was not excited to move. I was scared and I was stressed out. And so I said a prayer before I, cause I woke up super, super early. So I went back to sleep and right as I was falling asleep, I was like, I need another, just one more really big sign that I'm supposed to go with, with, you know, X amount of dollars and just, I'm, that I'm going to be safe there, that this is what's supposed to happen. I'm going to be happy there. And it's, it's what's supposed to happen. I wake up and I have a friend of mine who's like, oh, I forgot to ask you what we've been talking back and forth for a while. I forgot to ask you what, um, island are you going to? And I was like, oh, I'm going to the big island. And he was like, I have some incredible, amazing friends that are basically my family um, that I'm going to totally have welcome you because they're, they're from the island. They've been there their whole lives and they're incredible and will treat you incredibly amazing because you are somebody I know and they love everyone that I know. And I was just like, wow, if that is not the greatest gift ever of literally like me wanting to feel like I was supposed to go and like I was being welcomed. And then I literally get a message saying, oh, I'm going to have somebody that's going to welcome you into the island and show you around and like just be somebody really awesome and amazing for you to make you feel like you're not alone stepping into that. And I was just like on the verge of tears from hearing that. I was like, wow. Okay. There's my sign. That's a pretty big sign. Um, and he, and it's funny cause he's like, I'm I can't believe I never asked you like which island you were going to after all this time. And I was just like, that's because you weren't supposed to yet. <laughs> you know, you that you were supposed to figure.